Hi, welcome back to Barry T's Garage. I'm Barry T and I'm back at Five Star Engines. And today I'm gonna to have Grant Smith show us the basics on boring an engine block. Some of the details let you see how it's done, bringing you along. Ready to start the boring process of this block. Okay. So this block's been tore down completely, took all the plugs out, it's been thoroughly cleaned, been baked and then shot peened. So now it's time so we need to get essentially new cylinders. We're gonna use oversized pistons, so we need to cut these cylinders. This block, we'll see what size it'll clean up at, but usually we'll go either 30, 40, or 60 thousandths oversize on a typical okay. motor. So we need to do that in order to get proper piston to wall clearance and, and make sure um, there's no rust spots, no, you know, no corrosion in the cylinder. I'll make sure it's clean all the way through. Okay. So this is the first step. We'll cut it, if we're going to 30 thousandths, we'll cut it, say, 25. Okay. And the remaining 5 thousandths, we're going to take out with the uh, hone. I see. Is there more <clears throat> than just corrosion, different reasons why a block needs to be trimmed back? No, that's the biggest reason, just so you have a new, because really, for a new cylinder, you want to have proper cross hatch. Okay. And the proper um, surface finish of the cylinder for the piston rings okay. to seal to. Uh -huh. So when you're using new pistons and new rings, you want to have proper surface finish. Okay, now we've talked <clears throat> about crosshatch a lot, but tell me why is crosshatch necessary? I know it's kind of a screw kind of style looking. Yeah, so that's going to be necessary for the oiling on the cylinder wall. If you had, say, too steep of a crosshatch angle, your oil could run off. If you had too shallow, the oil might sit there and get burnt up okay. from the piston. So you want to have the right angle. The oil is going to sit there, oil the piston, but also run off so it's getting... Okay. Not going to be sitting there getting burnt up. So it's like everything else. There's a just right <laughs> yep. amount. Yeah, just right. Okay, very good. So here, before we start this, this machine, we're going to set it up down here. And this is set at 45 degrees. Okay. Of course, on a typical V8 block, the pistons are going to be 90 degrees to each other. Uh -huh. So when we set this on 45 degrees, set off of the mains, the main journals down here, mm -hmm. and we'll be cutting the piston um, in correct relation with the uh, crankshaft. Got it. Yes. 45 degrees on each side makes the 90 degree V, right? Yep. He's putting out on there a bar. It's a safety bar so the thing don't fall off on his foot. Right. It just tightens it on the machine. You notice the machine's really clean too. You have to clean the machine spotless after every boring because you don't want any shavings underneath that would offset the angle. Those are cams. Just gonna tighten that motor down and clamp it down just not too much, but just a little bit so it don't move while it's boring. The boring bar is a single boring bar that works for a circle around the on the sonar wall. Gotcha. So it makes a nice boring. Mm -hmm. That's the air floating back and forth between one cell and the other. And once he sets the height and the deck and everything, he can bore that whole motor without readjusting the machine. Okay. So you're getting the whole machine set. Yeah. One time it's going to be able to do all. Yeah, on both sides, yeah. Well, wow, okay. And he is borne off the crankshaft. So now we're doing any kind of correction from the pistons coming off the crankshaft. They'll be all off the, the uh, crankshaft exactly. So that kind of looks like a giant drill bit in a way, right? It's on a truck. Yeah, so it's got a little cutter. <clears throat> okay little cutter set down there. So we'll set this. We've got a uh, special mic here that'll set up on the cutter bit. So we can set this to exactly what size we want to cut to. And then um, one thing to remember when cutting these is if, say we're cutting a motor 30,000, so really we're gonna bore it out to 25, is we're only gonna be cutting 12 and a half thousandths on each side of the cylinder wall. So really you're not cutting much material at all if you're have some corrosion or whatnot, you need to really consider that on whether or not you're able to clean it up. Does a, does a <coughs> cylinder ever get oblong? Is that ever a reason? Yes, you can have that. So there's some older boring bar machines that might clamp onto the deck. Uh -huh. So if that deck surface isn't perpendicular to the cylinder wall or the cylinder, then it might bore it crooked or something like that. Uh -huh. But on this machine, 
when we've got it based off of the crank center line that we'll see that if we're motors been yeah bored over 30 with some other different boring bar machine uh -huh. and this one yeah we would see that where it would have shadows on the top and bottom where it's been crooked previously oh, okay this is a rotler okay. boring bar we have two of them okay this one here and the one right behind you uh -huh. so uh right and they're made in i think they're made in portland oregon or something but they're really supposed the best boring bars there is the most accurate really? and we've had these machines i think that one behind you, I bought that maybe in 1975, I think. You put some miles a, on it. I put some miles on it there, and it still operates like brand new. Wow. Of course, we keep it clean, and a good good operator here with this electric crane, uh, he can run both machines at the same time. So here we've got these centering teeth, so I'll bring these out, and that's going to center the cutter in the middle of the oh, cylinder. that's how it's done because this whole mandrel is on a float, so it'll float around freely and makes it real easy to, to center right in the middle of the cylinder. Like so from there, we'll clamp it down. We've got our bit, se bit set. Uh -huh. Now we're ready to cut. You see the little sparks come out of there a little bit. we got a depth gauge here that we adjust this. Okay. So this mechanism here will automatically hit this and set the machine off after it clears the bore. Okay, off right. the bottom of the it's cylinder. It's like an automatic stop when you do yeah. that, right? Yeah. And we have to set that different for Ford motor, either 302, a, or else uh, a Chevy motor, the cylinder will be a little longer maybe or something. You adjust all that on this. First time you cut the the uh, first cut you do so you can we we'll do all the motors and we like to do uh, in our production we like to do maybe several Ford motors like this uh -huh. and then change it all over and then do several Chevy motors but it don't take much to change it one or the other so we'll put in a different motor for yeah. one for a bit of time yeah but I'm sure. If you set up for a certain type of block, it's nice to run them all through yeah. for a while. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Usually you can bore a motor in about 30 minutes. Okay. So you say you bought that one in 75, how much newer is this one? Almost the same. Almost the same. handle goes on here, we can crank it when we're doing sleeves and we just want to cut the top of the cylinder or do something particular, we can run it by hand. We have a few adapters here for different engines and they'll set on this block and they so we raise the engines if they happen to be a four cylinder or a different height engine to still reach our boring bar with some tools. Yeah, for any inline motors, 
straight stick. We're going to take off this 45 degree plate and use these because it's going to sit straight right. up yeah. to the boring bar. It's really a spec machine. And I bought it, I mean, the uh, Rotner Company bought it to uh, Anaheim, California to the SEMA show. So I made them a deal that uh, if they come down here, they want to bring it to the SEMA show to display it. So I'm sure they picked one of their better machines. I hope. So anyways, uh, when they got done at Promoter, they shipped it to Phoenix here free. The shipping was free, so that was a good deal, yeah. So this is the machine as seen in SEMA 1975. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Okay. Now we've heard it, it just cleared the cylinder wall. Okay. So now the stop's set up in a good position where it'll automatically stop the machine from going down and cutting through the bottom of the block. We'll adjust it a little higher for next cylinder. Okay. Now for bringing the machine up, we're going to want to float it back so we don't drag that bit drag it all the way up the cylinder wall. Okay. Oh man, you're already set for the second one. Yep, so it goes pretty fast. <laughs> and so now we're gonna set our mic up to check this first cylinder, make sure it's cutting exactly what we set the cutter bit to. Okay. This, this, whole, this whole gauge here and what he's adjusting, again, is on half, half the distance. Right, yeah, because you're doing yeah. just the radius, not the diameter. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So he's got to set it on zero, exactly, maybe 25 thousandths over bore. Okay. Four inch, 25 thousandths. So he's got to run it up and down the sonar wall. This machine, this gauge he has here has got three legs on it and plus the adjustable one. Okay. And that makes the session. So anyways, it centers itself. Okay, automatically. Automatically. So we'll check it right here. We're about, I set the gauge right on 40, so it shows we've got five thousandths to go. So we're cutting, or this motor, we were cutting 40 thousandths. So that's right at 36 on the bottom. And that's normal to see is the bit's gonna warm up. It's gonna start okay. cutting a little more right at the top. It's about 35, so perfect. So that leaves us yeah. four or five thousandths to the clean hone. up in the hone. Okay. To finish hone, yeah. So the, the hone then takes a little more material as well as doing the cross hatching. Yeah. I guess we're going to see that, but yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what's going on with the hone. Yeah. The okay. hone is a four stone hone, and it, it's precision hone. And we usually buy all our stuff from Sunrun. And I know some of the several people make it, but it's a brand name. And we have a lot of, several pieces of equipment from Sunrun. And that's in St. Louis. And, uh, and the Sunrun home has four stones on it. And it centers it. And it actually runs on amperage on how much it pulls the motor down. So if you get to the bottom of the bore when you're honing, it may be a little heavier on the bore, so the amperage goes up when we see that. When we get done honing it, the, the honer will go up and down the full length of the bore and say the amperage is the same. So we know it's precision. You can't get much better than that. So, this is the machine that I bought, 1975, because I just looked at it. Okay. At one time or other, this vacuum, this power switch here quit. It wouldn't release, so I drilled a hole in it. And now I can take my screwdriver in there and flick the switch. 
and keep boring. Look how many times I... That's an Ed Smith modification yeah. right there. Took my little screwdriver right in to switch it back off so I could move the machine. This is my grandson, Grant, our, our oldest son, Chris, a boy, and he's 21 years old. I think he's been working in the shop ever since he was 14 or 15 years old. Probably started over here grinding valves, and then, so right now he's basically the uh, shop foreman in, in charge of some of the equipment and what to do with them and repairing them and cleaning them and maintaining them and stuff like that, and he knows how to run all the equipment in the whole shop. Balance machine, we balanced that motor the other day, yep. and uh, all the seat and guide machines. I think you can run all those and and everything in the whole shop. So you're rightly proud. So, so 21 years old is pretty good. That's amazing. So I think that's pretty well done one side of the motor. Uh -huh. So it took about maybe about 15 minutes or something. Yeah. And it would be easy just to flip it over and do the other side easy. Yeah. So. And the biggest thing when we flip this over now is going to make sure that everything is clean. There's no shavings. So when we reset it back on the machine, we're not, yeah, pinching any shavings and adjusting right. the block yeah. around. Got a big vacuum cleaner that sits right there in the middle. Oh yeah, it's just right And uh, it's right there to clean both machines. You can see how the floor is clean here. Yeah. Basically the, sh the floor is clean in the whole shop. You don't see any dirt or anything in anywhere in the, show sh in the whole shop. Right. And it's just like it. Uh, it's just a little newer. It's got a little more white paint on it. Some of these, but I remember one right better Machinist would do, operate both at the same time. Well, he would just be boring that one there while it's boring, it would, it would shut itself off. And he would be over here and just dust in this needle with the same, the same, the same bit and everything else, and start this needle, go back over and change that one. And pretty soon he's got a lot of motors bored. A few months ago, we had several stacks of motors behind you there, maybe 15 or 20. And you see right now, there's this one here and one more. But today's Friday, too. Yeah. So I don't think the kid that normally, the guy that normally bores, the younger guy, that uh, is, is gone today. Give me. Yeah, it's a thick yeah, pile. Yeah, big pile, yeah. yeah. We'd be surprised how off how often this thing gets filled full of shavings. We're well, doing motors all day long. Yep, so now got it all cleaned up, flipped it over to the other side. It'll be the same process for this side. Okay. That's why I have two of them. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Huh? Oh, no. 21. Mm -hmm. This is... 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 This